Hello everyone. So in this part, uh, you will be watching tutorial on uh, complementary foods for seven months old and eight to eleven months old. Uh, you know, as child grows older, uh, they need more quantity of food, and the frequency also increases, and also the change in consistency. So that's what you will see in in all these tutorials, uh, you know, vegetarian recipes, non-veg recipes for both seven months old and eight to eleven months old. That uh, frequency has increased. You know, so from uh, for example, you watch that uh, six months old children, they need four tablespoon in the morning, four tablespoon uh, in the evening. So in seven month old, basically that tablespoon becomes more like a cup. So it would be half a cup, you know, uh, three times a day. Okay, so the quantity also increased for seven month old, and also uh, uh, you know the uh, frequency increased to one more time. Okay, and also seven month old is still kind of more uh, purely mashed food, you know. Um, but as child grows older, say around seven and a half, eight months old, then you definitely want to start uh, using uh, much thicker consistency in a sense that you know just kind of uh, mash that food with hand. You know, don't put it in a in a mixer to make it puree. Uh, make it uh, really, uh, you know, uh, and it should be different variety of food. Uh, also, don't forget to put those powders that you had learnt in an earlier tutorial. Uh, you know, uh, your uh, nuts and seed powder, your peanut powder uh, with sesame seed, other different seeds that you can use. Uh, use your uh, germinated bean uh, roasted, you know, uh, powder. But make sure that you, uh, when you're cooking the food for the baby, you need to cook those powders. It's important to cook it. Uh, specifically your uh, bean powder okay because beans are kind of some of the beans are very high in lactins and lactins can cause a lot of bloating and you know a lot of uh, inflammation in, in, the, in the intestine so just make sure that you cook it really well and then put it in children's kitchidi or whatever that you're making uh, but to use this recipes uh, do teach mothers uh, about this uh, recipes because what I have noticed in my program that uh, most of the mothers they give very monotonous food you know uh, they give uh, specifically in uh, you know uh, NGOs that I was working in uh, mothers were giving uh, you know uh, roti uh, in the morning then some dal chawal in the afternoon and some khichdi in the evening so it was all grain based diet okay uh, do include proteins do include uh, if child is non veg to do include eggs uh, include uh, you know uh, other fish powders and you know there are other powders that we've also prepared for non veg children uh, but do uh, you know add liver do, do add uh, meat cells also fine uh, in vegetarian diet as i mentioned earlier uh, of course uh, always think of protein first okay uh, for seven and eight to eleven months old, uh, dahi, paneer, you know, uh, lots of uh, legumes, beans, pulses, dals, you know, add some millets, of course. Uh, not to forget your vegetables, uh, you know, all different kind of variety of vegetables. Uh, do expose them to all different kind of vegetables. It's okay if they don't take it uh, in first go. Uh, keep trying every few days, you know. Uh, even if they try just one teaspoon, it's okay. Do not force feed them. Uh, very important. Uh, make sure when they are making them sit, you know, just uh, do not feed them when they are uh, crawling or when they are, you know. Uh, Sometimes we do see like uh, 11, 10 months, 11 months. So uh, sometimes you start, uh, see them walking. So you definitely don't want to feed the child when child is uh, walking or taking steps. You know you want to kind of stabilize them. Uh, a lot of time we do see choking if they are walking and eating, and they can choke. So that's one thing. Uh, Another thing is avoid hard food. Uh, it can cause uh, choking. So anything which is hard, you don't want to give it. Okay. So uh, that's it. Uh, enjoy and let me know how the recipes were. Okay. Thank you. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on vegetarian recipes for 7 month old babies. In this tutorial, we will learn about importance of complementary feeding for 7 month old babies and 
how to prepare vegetarian recipes such as jackfruit seeds porridge, horsegram amaranth leaves porridge, amaranth black-eyed beans porridge, fenugreek leaves and beans porridge, and kodomillet bengal gram porridge. Let's begin. During first year, when baby starts crawling and moving, her growth is rapid. The energy requirements of the baby also increases. Six to eight months old babies require up to 200 calories from complementary feeds. The quantity of food given should be increased gradually. Also, remember that breastfeeding is at most important along with sufficient complementary feeding. Therefore, when the baby completes seven months, start giving half cup of complementary food thrice a day. Half cup is about 125 milliliters or 8 tablespoons of food. By now, the baby is comfortable with various food items. As she started complementary food when she became 6 months old. Now, start introducing a combination of foods to the baby. Note that only mashed and pureed form of food should be given. Make sure that the consistency of baby's food is thick enough and not at all watery. While preparing the baby's food, always use local and seasonal ingredients. Also, remember to add various nutritious powders such as powder of nuts and seeds, powder of sprouted beans, curry leaves powder, drumstick leaves powder. This has been explained in another tutorial of the same series. Do not add salt in baby's food until the baby turns 1. Do not add sugar, jaggery in baby's food until the baby turns 2. Now we will look at a few vegetarian recipes which can be used as complementary food for the baby. Our first recipe is jackfruit seeds porridge. Ingredients required are 15 to 20 jackfruit seeds one small banana or half banana, coconut milk or breast milk, one teaspoon powdered nuts and seeds. To prepare jackfruit seeds porridge, wash jackfruit seeds thoroughly. Take these seeds in a steel pot. Add water till seeds get covered. Pressure cook it until 5 to 6 whistles. Take out these seeds on a plate and allow them to cool for some time. Then peel them to remove the outer covering. Next make a puree using a mixer or a stone grinder. Along with this peel a ripe banana and mash it using a spoon. Now mix mashed banana and jackfruit seeds puree together. Add 2 tablespoons of coconut milk or breast milk in it. Add powdered nuts and seeds in it. Mix it well. Cook this mixture for 3 to 4 minutes on a low flame. The jackfruit seeds porridge is ready. This jackfruit seeds porridge is rich in protein, omega 3 fatty acids, potassium, and phosphorus. The second recipe is horse gram amaranth leaves porridge. To prepare this, we will need 2 tablespoons horse gram powder, 2 cups washed amaranth leaves, 1 fourth teaspoon of curry leaves powder, half teaspoon ghee. Method First, soak the horse grams in water for 7 to 8 hours. After which, put it in a strainer and rinse it thoroughly with water. Let all the water drain out. Now, Tie it in a clean cotton cloth and keep it aside until it sprouts. Dry this sprouted horse gram in sunlight for a day or two. Roast it on a low flame for 8 to 10 minutes. Let it cool. Then grind it and make a powder of it. This entire process is known as malting. Simultaneously, heat ghee in a pan. Add washed amaranth leaves in it. Saute it for 4 to 5 minutes and let it cool. 
and make a puree of it using a mixer or a stone grinder. Next, add 2 tablespoons of water in horse gram powder. Mix it well so that lumps are not formed. Cook this thin paste on a low flame for 6 to 7 minutes. Now, add amaranth leaves puree in this horse gram paste and mix it well. Cook it for the next 2 to 3 minutes on a low flame. Add curry leaves powder in it and mix again. Remove it from the flame and our horse gram amaranth leaves porridge is ready. This porridge is rich in protein, omega 3 fatty acids, calcium, phosphorus, iron, and potassium. Please note that one can use any locally available beans and leafy vegetables to make such porridges. Always try to combine beans with various millets and grains such as sorghum, ragi, kodu millet, etc. This combination provides complete protein to the baby. You can either add malted powders of these grains and millets in the baby's food or you can add cooked millet sprouts in such porridges in mashed form. The third recipe is amaranth black-eyed beans porridge. Ingredients required are 2 tablespoons malted amaranth powder, 2 tablespoons sprouted black-eyed beans puree and 1 fourth teaspoon drumstick leaves powder. Method For making malted amaranth powder, follow the instructions as explained in the earlier recipe of the same tutorial. Then, take sprouted black-eyed beans in a steel pot and pressure cook it until 4 to 5 whistles. Now, make a puree of this cooked black-eyed beans. Then, take 2 tablespoons of malted amaranth powder in a bowl. Add sufficient water in it. Mix it well to avoid lump formation. Cook this thin paste of amaranth powder for 2 to 3 minutes on a low flame. Add the pureed black eyed beans in it. Mix it well and cook it for 4 to 5 minutes. Remove it from the flame. In the end, add 1 4 teaspoon of drumstick leaves powder in this cooked porridge and amaranth black eyed beans porridge is ready. This amaranth black eyed beans porridge is rich in protein, omega 3 fatty acids, phosphorus, magnesium, iron, potassium and calcium. One can use a combination of the following sprouted ingredients to make such porridges. Ragi, sorghum, moth beans, Bengal grams, etc. The fourth recipe is fenugreek leaves and beans porridge. Ingredients needed are 2 cups washed and trimmed fenugreek leaves, 1 teaspoon of ghee, 2 tablespoons of fresh coconut paste, 2 tablespoons of powder of sprouted beans. To make a powder of beans, follow the instructions which have been discussed in another tutorial of the same series. Method Heat 1 teaspoon of ghee in a pan. Add fenugreek leaves and saute it for 2 to 3 minutes. Transfer it to a clean plate and allow it to cool for some time. Then make a puree of it using a grinder or a mixer. Cook this puree on a low flame for a minute. Add 2 tablespoons of powdered beans in it. Mix it well to avoid lump formation. Add a little amount of boiled and cool water in it if required. Now, add 2 tablespoons of coconut paste in it. To make coconut paste, take freshly grated coconut and grind it to the paste. Then, cook this mixture for next 7 to 8 minutes on a low flame with continuous stirring. And, fenugreek leaves and beans porridge is ready. This fenugreek leaves and beans porridge is rich in protein, omega-3 fatty acid, folate, iron, calcium, phosphorus, zinc and potassium. 
while preparing this recipe do not forget to add grains or combine it with various grains or millets as explained earlier the fifth recipe is kodu millet bengal gram puree ingredients 2 tablespoons kodu millet 2 tablespoons sprouted bengal gram 3 tablespoons coconut milk 1 teaspoon ghee method take 2 tablespoons of kodu millet in a steel pot wash it thoroughly then add 3 to 4 tablespoons of water in it pressure cook it until 3 to 4 whistles meanwhile pressure cook sprouted bengal grams until 4 to 5 whistles then make a puree of it heat 1 teaspoon of ghee in a steel pot add cooked kodu millet bengal gram puree and coconut milk in it mix it well cook it for next 4 to 5 minutes and let it cool now kodu millet bengal gram puree is ready this puree is rich in protein iron phosphorus magnesium calcium and potassium this brings us to the end of this tutorial thanks for joining Welcome to the spoken tutorial on non-vegetarian recipes for 7 month old babies. In this tutorial, we will learn about energy requirements for 7 month old babies. Preparation of some non-vegetarian recipes. Let us begin. A 7 month old baby requires 200 calories from complementary food in a day half a cup of food should be given thrice a day a half cup is about 125 ml or 8 tablespoons of food only mashed and pureed form of food should be given the consistency of baby's food should be thick enough While making the baby's food, always use local and seasonal ingredients. Make sure you are giving a combination of foods to your baby. Also, please make sure not to add salt in any of the baby's food until they turn 1. Sugar and jaggery should not be added until the baby turns 2. Non-vegetarian foods are rich in good fats, protein and other micronutrients. These nutrients are essential for proper growth and development of the babies. Foods like chicken, eggs and meat can be given. Now, let us see some of the non-vegetarian recipes for 7 month old babies. Our first recipe is dried fish powder. We will need dried Bombay duck fish to make this powder. Procedure: Take 4 to 5 dried Bombay duck fish. Clean it by cutting the head, tail and the fins using a knife or a scissor. Then cut the dried fish into medium sized pieces dry roast these pieces on a pan on low flame for 5 to 10 minutes let it cool down and then grind it to make a fine powder dry fish powder is ready it should be stored in the refrigerator in an airtight container 1 to 2 teaspoons of this powder can be added to baby's food any local dried fish can be used to make this powder the second recipe is egg and green gram sprouts puree for this recipe we need one hard boiled egg one tablespoon of green gram procedure 
wash and soak green gram in water for 6 to 8 hours. Strain the water and keep the green gram in a cool and dry place. Note that sprouting depends on the weather too. It will take more time to sprout in winter than summer. Once the sprouts appear, boil it in half cup of water for 5 to 10 minutes. Let it cool and then mash it using a spoon or with clean hands. Take a hard boiled egg on a plate. Remove the outer shell and mash the egg using a spoon or clean hands. Now, mix the mashed eggs with mashed sprouted green gram. It is ready to be served. Our next recipe is chicken liver and little millet porridge. To make this recipe, we need 1 chicken liver, 1 tablespoon little millet, half lemon, pinch of turmeric powder. Procedure Take 1 tablespoon of little millet in a bowl. Wash and soak it for 8 to 10 hours. Next, take washed and cleaned chicken liver in a bowl. Apply juice of half a lemon and a pinch of turmeric powder. Keep it aside for 15 to 20 minutes. Next, Cook the chicken liver in a pan with half a cup of water. Cook for 7 to 10 minutes. Let it cool and then mash it with a spoon or with clean hands. Then take the soaked little millet and rinse it well. Put it in a vessel to cook with 1 cup of water. Cook for 15 to 20 minutes on low flame until the water dries up. Add the mashed chicken liver to it and mix well. Chicken liver and little millet porridge is ready. Moving further, let's look at the recipe for bone broth. To make this recipe, we need 200 grams of cleaned and washed goat bones. 2 chopped tomatoes, half teaspoon cumin seeds powder, half teaspoon turmeric powder, half teaspoon ghee. Procedure Heat ghee in a vessel and add chopped tomatoes. Add cumin seeds powder and turmeric powder. Mix well and saute it for 2 to 3 minutes on a low flame. Add cleaned goat bones and 1 liter of water in it. Cook it on low flame for about 30 minutes. Once it cools, strain the broth to separate the bones which can choke the baby. This broth can be used as an alternative to water in the baby's food. It can also be used as an alternative for coconut milk. All these recipes are rich in protein, omega-3 fatty acids and choline. These recipes are sources of vitamins like vitamin D, A, B2, B9 and B12. Calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, iron, zinc and selenium are also present. Include these recipes in the baby's diet for good health. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for joining. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on vegetarian recipes for 8 to 11 month old babies. In this tutorial, we will learn to prepare some nutritious vegetarian recipes. During 8 to 11 months, the baby requires up to 
670 calories of energy in a day. This energy is provided by complementary food. Complementary food should be started after the baby completes 6 months of age. Along with complementary food, babies should be breastfed until 2 years of age. Once the baby completes 8 months, start giving her a half cup of food. A half cup is about 125 milliliters or 8 tablespoons of food. Feed her half cup of food four times a day. At this age, we can start giving finger foods to babies. Finger foods are foods that babies can eat by themselves using their hands. Softly cooked chopped vegetables and fruits are some examples. Pancake pieces, lentil cake, idli and vegetable cutlets are other examples. Do not add salt in any of the baby's food until they turn 1. Sugar and jaggery should not be added until the baby turns 2. Mother or the caregiver should ensure that the finger foods should not be hard. For example, do not give carrots as finger food. Hard finger food can choke the baby. We will now start with preparing the vegetarian recipes. Our first recipe is sorghum dokli in red lentil curry. To make this recipe, we will need 15 grams or 1 tablespoon of malted sorghum powder, 15 grams or 1 tablespoon pressure cooked sprouted red lentil, half cup finely chopped tomato, 25 grams or half cup finely chopped and steamed pumpkin. You will also need 2 teaspoons of sesame seeds powder, a pinch of turmeric powder, a pinch of cumin seeds powder, half lemon, 1 teaspoon ghee or oil. I will first explain the procedure for malting. Wash and soak sorghum in water for 8 to 9 hours. Later, put it in a strainer and rinse it thoroughly with water. Let all the water drain out and then tie it in a clean cotton cloth. Keep it aside until it sprouts. This entire procedure is called sprouting. Note that different ingredients take different time to sprout. Dry the sprouted sorghum in the sunlight covered with a cloth for a day or two. Later, roast it on a low flame for 8 to 10 minutes and then let it cool. Then, grind and make a powder of it. This entire process is known as malting. With this, the malted sorghum powder is ready. We will start making the dough clean up. Take the malted sorghum powder in a bowl. Add sesame seeds and cumin seeds powder too. Mix it well. Add 1 4 teaspoon ghee or oil in it. Remember to make the dough hard. Start kneading the dough by adding a little water at a time. You can also add breast milk or coconut milk instead of water. Keep it aside for 15 minutes. Now make a ball of dough. Place it on a dusted rolling board and roll it into a circular disc. Cut this into a diamond shaped pieces using a knife. Keep them aside for later use. Now heat 1 4 teaspoon ghee in a vessel. Add chopped tomato and saute it for 2 to 3 minutes. To it, add turmeric powder and pressure cooked sprouted red lentils. Mix it well. Bring this to boil and add the diamond shaped cut pieces one by one. Mix everything well again. Cook this mixture for 5 to 7 minutes. Our sorghum dokli with red lentil curry is ready. Squeeze half a lemon in the curry and serve. Our next recipe is steamed lentil cake. Ingredients required are 15 grams or 1 tablespoon sprouted horse gram, 
15 grams or 1 tablespoon Bengal gram flour, a pinch of turmeric powder. You will also need 50 grams or half cup curd, half chopped tomato, two handful of coriander leaves. Before we begin, please sprout the horse gram. Follow the same method as explained earlier in this tutorial. Procedure Make a thin paste of horse gram sprouts by adding a little water in a grinder. Transfer this into a bowl. To this, add Bengal gram flour, curd and turmeric powder. Leave 1 teaspoon of curd from half cup for later use. Mix it well and add water if required. Keep this batter aside for 5 to 7 hours in a warm place to ferment. Once the batter ferments, grease a plate with some ghee. Pour the batter on the plate. Steam it for 25 to 30 minutes on a medium flame. Check if it is cooked by inserting a knife. If the knife has the batter on it, then you need to steam for some more time. If it comes out clean, then lentil cake is ready. Keep this aside to cool. Cut it into a small pieces and transfer them onto a plate. Keep them aside and start making the chutney. I will now show you how to make the tomato chutney. Put one chopped tomato, two handful of washed coriander leaves in a grinder, then add one teaspoon curd and grind to make a smooth paste. Transfer this into a bowl. Serve this chutney with lentil cake. You can mash the cake or dip it in tomato chutney and feed it to babies. Our next recipe is Amaranth Green Gram Pancake. For this, we need 15 grams or 2 tablespoons malted amaranth powder. You will also need 15 grams or 1 tablespoon sprouted green gram, 2 teaspoons peanut powder, a pinch of turmeric powder, a pinch of cumin seeds powder, half teaspoon ghee. The procedure for malting has already been explained earlier. Please follow the same method for malting amaranth powder. Now we will make a paste of sprouted green gram. Grind the green gram into a smooth paste using a mixer or a stone grinder. Add a little water while making the paste. Transfer the mixture into a bowl. Add 2 tablespoons of malted amaranth powder and peanuts powder in it. Next, add cumin seeds powder and turmeric. Mix everything well. Add 1 fourth cup of water to this and mix again. Our batter is ready. Heat ghee on a pan. Pour the batter on the pan in a circular shape using a spoon. Cover the pan with a lid and cook until both sides are cooked. It will take 4 to 7 minutes to cook. Amaranth green gram pancake is ready. Once cooled, you can feed the pancake with curd to the baby. Our next recipe is little millet with curd and vegetables. To make this recipe, we will need 15 grams or 1 tablespoon little millet, 15 grams or 1 tablespoon sprouted yellow peas. Sprouting has been explained earlier in this tutorial. Please follow the same method. You will also need 50 grams or half cup curd, half finely chopped tomato, 6 to 8 cauliflower florets, 2 handfuls of drumstick leaves, half teaspoon turmeric powder, half teaspoon ghee. Before making this recipe, wash and soak the little millet for 8 hours. I will tell you the procedure now. Heat ghee in a vessel, add chopped tomato and saute it for 5 to 7 minutes on a low flame and add turmeric powder. Add sprouted yellow peas, 
drumstick leaves, cauliflower and curd. Mix well. Cook this for some time. Next, add little millet and water. Mix again. Cook this on a medium flame until little millet, peas and cauliflower are cooked. Transfer this into a bowl. Little millet with curd and vegetables is ready. Remember to use locally available ingredients while preparing the baby's food. All these recipes are rich in protein and omega-3 fatty acids. They are rich in vitamin D, vitamin A and B complex. They are also rich in calcium, magnesium, potassium, sulfur, iron and zinc. Include these recipes daily in your baby's diet for good health. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for joining. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on non-vegetarian recipes for 8 to 11 month old babies. In this tutorial, we will learn Calorie requirements and finger foods for 8 to 11 month old babies. Preparation of some nutritious non-vegetarian recipes. Until now, you were feeding the baby with half a cup of food thrice a day. When the baby completes 8 months, the frequency of feeding must be increased. During 8 to 11 months, the baby requires up to 300 calories of energy per day. Along with complementary feeding, breastfeeding up to 2 years is necessary. Half a cup of food should be given 4 times a day. A half cup is about 125 milliliters or 8 tablespoons of food. The baby's food consistency should also be changed. Earlier you were feeding pureed or mashed foods to the baby. At this age, soft and chunky food can be given to the baby. You can also introduce finger foods to the babies at this age. Foods that babies can eat by hand themselves are called finger foods. For example, omelette, boiled egg, cooked pieces of fish, mutton or chicken. Pieces or slices of fruits, vegetables and paneer are other examples. A few precautions should be taken while feeding non-vegetarian food to the baby. All non-vegetarian food should be thoroughly washed and cooked. Care should be taken to completely remove the bones of fish, chicken or meat. Bones can choke the baby. Also, please make sure not to add salt in any of the baby's food until they turn 1. Sugar and jaggery should not be added until the baby turns 2. Let us now proceed with the preparation of some non-vegetarian recipes. Our first recipe is steamed chicken balls. Ingredients required to make this recipe are 2 and a half tablespoons or 80 grams of minced chicken, half lemon, half finely chopped onion, half beaten egg, one tablespoon roasted Bengal gram flour. Procedure Take washed and minced chicken in a bowl. Squeeze half a lemon on top of it. Mix it well and keep it aside for 20 to 30 minutes. 
In the same bowl of minced chicken, add chopped onions and beaten egg. Then add roasted Bengal gram flour and mix well. Divide the mixture into four equal portions and make round balls of it. To steam the chicken balls, fill one fourth of a vessel with water. Place a stand in the center of the vessel. Take the chicken balls in a steel plate and place it on the stand. Cover the vessel with a lid and cook on medium flame for 10 minutes. Take the balls out on a plate. Our steamed chicken balls are ready. The second recipe is omelette. To prepare this recipe, you will require 2 eggs, 1 fourth teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 fourth teaspoon cumin seeds powder, 1 teaspoon ghee or oil. Procedure Beat the eggs thoroughly until it becomes frothy. Add turmeric powder and cumin seeds powder. Mix it well. Heat ghee or oil in a pan. Pour the beaten eggs on it. Let it cook on a low flame for 3 to 4 minutes, both the sides. Omelette is ready. The next recipe is goat liver curry. You will need the following ingredients. 75 grams of goat liver. Half onion, half tomato, half teaspoon turmeric powder, half teaspoon cumin powder, half lemon, one tablespoon of coconut. You will also need one teaspoon ghee or oil. Procedure Take cleaned and washed goat liver on a plate. Cut it into small pieces and add juice of half a lemon on it. Keep it aside for 15 to 20 minutes. Then pressure cook the liver pieces with half cup of water until 4 whistles. Let the pressure release by itself and then open the pressure cooker. Side by side Grind onion, tomato and coconut to make a smooth paste. Now heat ghee or oil in a pan. Add the prepared paste in it. Add turmeric powder and cumin powder. Saute it for 3 to 4 minutes. Add cooked goat liver and half cup of water in it. Cook this curry for 5 to 7 minutes on a low flame. Goat liver curry is ready. The last recipe is steamed fish. To make this recipe, you will need 1 cleaned and washed pomfret, 1 banana leaf, 1 tablespoon of curd, 1 fourth teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 fourth teaspoon cumin powder. Procedure Take curd in a bowl. Add turmeric powder and cumin powder in it and mix well. Apply this on a cleaned and washed piece of pomfret. Keep it aside for 15 to 20 minutes. Meanwhile, wash the banana leaf thoroughly. Place it on a clean cloth and wipe it with the cloth to dry the leaf. Next, heat the banana leaf on a medium flame for few seconds. Do it on the other side of the leaf as well. This will make the banana leaf soft for wrapping the fish. Now wrap the fish pieces in the banana leaf. Steam it for 18 
to 20 minutes on a low flame. The procedure for steaming has been explained in the tutorial earlier. Remove the wrapped fish from heat and let it cool down. Once it cools down, unwrap the fish from the banana leaf. Steamed fish is ready. Make sure to separate the fish from the bones and then serve it to the baby. Instead of pomfret, you can also use any locally available fish in your area. All these recipes are rich in protein, omega-3 fatty acids and choline. These recipes are sources of vitamins like vitamin D, A, B2, B3, B6, B9, B12, iron, zinc and phosphorus are also present in all these recipes. Include these recipes in the baby's diet for good health. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for joining. Thank you.